4 a.m. and I just reached Masters in the US with a 100% win rate and I thought it was worth making a video about it. Try to see how I did that, what we can learn from it and how you can maybe yourself, I mean, not get 100% win rate to Masters because there's a bit of luck in it probably, but you're going to see that you're going to have insane success. I did that with Trinomir only. Is Trinomir busted? Am I busted? They get giga lucky. We're going to see right now. <laughs> So this is it. These are the games. These are the games that they played that got me to Masters. It's 12 wins, zero losses. So of course, it's not like 20, 30, 40 games, but all of them have been played with uh, last seasons, last splits, around 300, 400 LP MMR minimum. Like you see here, it's uh, I think Marvin 1v9. This game was Challenger or his permanent Challenger was Singed. Uh, yeah, you can see some pretty good players in that. So it was not smurfing it was not dual queuing it was just like me playing Trent and the first thing that you can notice is well of course like I got a bit lucky but the KDA is really clean the CS per minute is really clean of course I've been performing really well not, not pure luck of course and something that you can see is that eight days ago seven days ago five days ago four two one and then a bit more games but in multiple sessions I haven't been playing long sessions or anything you shouldn't as well if you want to reach a very high win rate you shouldn't play in the crazy long sessions just spamming games on top of each other of each other now regarding the build what, what what can we say about the builds well as you can see i've actually been going some straight breaker in those games straight here straight here straight here straight and straight which is actually funny to see because on the other account where i played like 30 40 games in a higher mmr even i haven't gone uh straight at all so why did they go straight breaker i don't even know like just, sometimes I just have a feeling about items and here I think the feeling came from like squishy 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 and then the support that I'm not gonna face too much yeah like squishy 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 like the targets oh yeah also I, I, I messed up I took I took PT on accident for these two first games so there is that and then well, yeah when, when I'm into full squishy full kiting comps uh, and I feel like I want to snowball, I most likely go straight breaker. And I think there's still room for straight in the current patch. But most likely, yeah, you're going to go Hydra. It's really strong, really good. Yeah, I actually went Mortal Second into, into Lawi to keep snowballing on her. Yeah, you can have some creativity in your builds. Like, you don't have to always go for the same thing, like Hydra, Zeal, IE, PD, etc. You can you can try to shift a bit and maybe go for a straight, maybe go for an early other item, you know. Sometimes I do Mortal Remainder. Sometimes they do lordums before I do IE, etc. So so yeah, that's that's something. But I mean the build is pretty common. We could we can look at the runes as well. These are the runes that I've been taking. Uh grass demolish, second winner of Vitalize. Alacrity, last stand, and then attack speed, adaptive, and I like to have some tenacity. I know that other trainer players just take HP or HP per level, but I like that. I mean, it's, it's always useful, you know? There's so many slows and CCs in the game, and you cannot dodge all of them. Now, what makes Trindomir so strong, actually? Um, well, I feel like the reason is in the fact that Trindomir always was a really good laner and then he was really decent in mid game and then he falls off in late game but right now not only he's even a better laner than he used to be and you can see like right now for example like that the last game that i just played right now i'm kind of out of the lane i lost a lot of hp but the thing is with second win revitalize grasp and cues of course well the difference between a good and a bad situation is just the amount of cues that you need to press and here, that's kind of what I do. I trade a lot of HP, but no one can actually take you out of laning phase. And in harder matchups, you can actually go fleet footwork. And you're going to just stay and out sustain pretty much anyone in the game. And this makes you win pretty much like every single laning. Like even if listen kind of troll that. Well, at some point, I'm just going to be able to look at that sustain back up. Remember when I was 1 HP? Well, now I'm almost full HP and we can just kill the Ilawi. and even if she base tp etc it doesn't matter i don't have to tp like i can just have infinite hp bars like sometimes i would win lane by having like 
sustaining three times the HP bar of my opponent. Like he he bases, TPs, comes back, bases, comes back, etc. And I'm still on my first HP bar, but because I have two infinite sustain, I can just stay forever. And the thing is, I'm not gonna lie, I'm not I'm not the best player. I'm not as good as as some other Trinity players, but it allows you to make mistakes. It allows you to make a lot of mistakes. You can just go for like kind of random trades. And here I'm just looking to trade HP because I know that I'm gonna sustain that, and she's not. And that's what I've been doing pretty much in any scenario, any situation. I actually have a matchup spreadsheet that you can check it. The link is in the description. But I feel like I could swap any description of how to play a matchup by take short trades, I'll sustain. That's it. Look at this again. A pretty big trade. Running really low in HP. This looks pretty bad. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't because now I can just wait. Press Qs. Press Qs on CD. And at some point, I will actually end up out sustaining. If you don't out sustain the HP bar of your opponent, you're gonna out sustain the mana bar. So that's a really strong thing about Trinova laning phase. I mean, of course, you need to understand the laning fundamentals, how to hold the freeze, uh, when the wave is actually like, freezing, pushing to you, etc. And then just just abuse that part. Understand like that's that that's what makes Trinova strong. And then you're gonna have pretty okay. I mean, this game. <laughs> I have an troll that pretty hard. And then up W for AD debuff. I didn't even W. Well, I gotta troll that. But yeah, Tristan doesn't really have AD. So that's how you're gonna lay when you're laning phase. It's like, it's like pretty easy. You just, just press Qs. And then you can go Tiamat early. You can go for Vem Scepter early. AD probably matters more than movement speeds these days because you're not going for all ins anymore. And then look at that. You're just gonna instant waves, go for demolish procs, and, and start getting more and more fed over time just by playing the lane like that and now we can take another game as an example for mid game so i said that in the early game you're stronger mid game you're always strong but you're probably slightly stronger because of okay i have straight here but could be a hydra and just gonna be able to push the waves really fast most likely you have a lead from laning phase and then what you want to do again you're not as strong as before to just go on the side lane and dive your opponent so you go on the side lane you bring your opponent and then you do something about it you go for camps you go for for rotations for roams uh, you're gonna buy the deal early that's gonna give you a lot of move speed and here you see i brought gp on side lane and then i was the first to move and i can play on that drake and now playing for this herald because it gives space again to my team. I guess we got the Warwick or we got, got him out. But I mean, basically you're a space creator. You want to create space for your team. You want to create number advantages. It's going to be really important to tell your team where you want to play, what you want to do. And as much as possible, try to apply pressure on the side. Have someone match you. And then sometimes you're going to just be able to get the wave under turret and go for demolish procs and ignore your opponent completely. Sometimes you're still going to be able to go for days. And sometimes you're gonna be able to just like pin someone bring him on side lane and ult rotate basically so boom that's another kill t2 arrow that i took by myself flash for flash and now i'm pinging that i'm going bot lane or i'm typing it probably and i'm just gonna go there and start playing for more objectives okay maybe the reason i don't go bot here it's yeah because drake is spawning my ID is that I don't want to send my ADC, I don't want to send my action top. I mean, I could send action top with TP, I guess. But I probably don't trust him at this point for actually being there for the objectives. So now all I'm thinking about is Drake. So we're going to apply some pressure top. Make sure that someone is matching me. Now GP is matching me. Now we're going to move first. But I guess my jungler dies, so... Okay, let me just take camp and now let me look to defend mid. I'm not going to play for this T3. It's a bit too far in the map. It's a bit too dangerous. And now I'm looking at the next objective. You know, the next objective is going to be Nash. Most likely I'm going to look to bring someone bot lane or create a number advantage. Well, I guess we're able to fight this and still get the Drake, which is pretty nuts. Cannot do Nash straight, so now I'm gonna go bot and do the, the same thing, you know, try to bring someone. I have my second item now, I have an AE, I actually have PD as well. Now I know that no one can match me, and I'm just gonna go there. Just gonna go there, push. Insane damage that you have once you have AE, by the way. So that's the thing, it's in mid game, you're str stronger than before, but in late game, you're also stronger than before, because now you have AE, you have insane damage, and I feel like even with the nerf, 40% critical strike damage um, instead of 50%. We're still going to be able to have insane damage and still going to be a better spot than Trinomir used to be in. So now I can just go on side lane, kill that Vlad, and look to apply pressure. Okay, maybe that was a bit too much. I remember that play now. 
But at least to get that jungle is bot, mid is bot, uh, their support is bot, and now we just take Nash. You're a space creator, as I said, and you keep creating space. So this on CD, you just keep doing that. Okay, now we're gonna look at the late game, and the thing is, Dreamer used to fall off in the late game because uh, he didn't have enough damage at that point to actually like kill his targets. He was, I mean, he still is super squishy, so people can make him ult pretty fast. The thing is now with IE with the crit item with the 50% crit that you get from your passive you actually have enough damage have enough pressure to be a menace in that late game so we're gonna see but it's gonna be the same shit you're now and you still are a space creator you want to connect your place to the objectives you want to I mean, it's gonna depend, you know, sometimes you want to bring people inside and if you can actually do something about it, if you can bring two people. Uh, but here, this is kind of my side lane, you know, I'm, I'm maintaining the pressure mid so we can move to the Nash. I'm staying with my team because I have plenty of CC, so you know that I can apply that insane damage. And this is actually like, I mean, Trinomer used to have more damage than that, but if you compare it to Split 1, Trinomer has so much damage from that IE boom auto auto E and goodbye Ari and I feel like there is there's a ton of damage in the game maybe too much kind of depends what you like about league now look at that play for example look at the damage that boom two autos and of course there's also the damage from Talia but yeah if you know like good old Trinomer you know that Trinomer used to have more damage than this but yeah, the damage is still pretty good. So you're gonna play the macro kind of like you play the mid game. Try to create space. Does it matter? Like if you're in sailing, does it matter? Are you gonna bring two people? Can you just go for turrets, etc.? If no, if you think that your team just wins the 5v5, we'll just go for these 5v5s, you know? And and now, yeah, you're you're a threat again. Trindomir is now a threat again. And can look to boom deal some big damage uh you have hydra to stay forever on the map i mean this game i probably have straight yep but you can stay forever on the map actually with hydra you are perma for hp you have demolished to so play a ton of pressure on side lane you're very dangerous in team fights as well if you have just a bit of cc in your team just a bit of setup trinomir is just just so much stronger so i mean i can show you something now okay look at that look at the win rates from the trinomir main slash otps this is step 1v9 70 percent win rate this is bocap 61 percent win rate here but this is bocap as well and that's 70 percent win rate rangers 70 percent win rate you look at me 63 percent win rate and that's on the other account so you add my 12 and 0 and i'm actually at 70 percent win rate every single trinomir main slash otp has has 70% win rate on the current split. Are we that good? I mean, we're probably pretty good as our champions, but we're not that good to have 70% win rate just being better than our opponents, you know? So the champion is in a really good state. I think you should 100% try it. You should 100% play it. If you like his identity, he's really fun to play. And if you're already in your main, well, keep it up. The champion is a pretty strong spot. You might not like what he has become because it's just like a sustained machine. He's not like that all-in dive champion that that he used to be but you should definitely try to make the best out of him because the best of him is pretty insane pretty nuts anyway i'm gonna keep grinding now looking to get this early season challenger i mean i'm not gonna lie even if it's an early season challenger i do a lot of coaching these days it's easier to sell coaching when you're challenger than grandmaster you know by the way if you want to get into coaching you have my link in the description you can go and metafay i have a launch offer you put shaduk-25 and then you have 25 percent of all of my coachings and if you want to learn from free well i stream almost every day i post content daily on youtube feel free to follow feel free to subscribe thank you guys for watching i will see you very soon it was shadok much love <laughs>